Alright, hey guys. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did in the last video using using Photoshop for 3D. Uh, I I download re-downloaded Blender and I tried it again and I feel comfortable in it. But just doing it this way in Photoshop is easier for right now. And I think that if you have version 22.5 and newer, it won't work or you don't have the 3D capabilities, but anything lower, you should be fine. All right, so I'm gonna take this. This is an illustrator, I use the pen tool. You can sketch it out like I did and go straight into Photoshop and use the pen tool there. And I'm working with an 11 by 17 inch document or about 3300 by 5100 pixels pixels at 300 ppi so i'm going to go back and do the full screen I'm going to go to my library yeah do i have it open yeah here it is it's just so different I'm not used to having to talk. So forgive me if I stop or have long pauses because I probably will. So I'm gonna take this, the artwork that we just took from Illustrator and I'm gonna drag it right here at the top or, or put it wherever, it doesn't really matter. And just like in the last video, I'm gonna come over here to, no, not layers. This window box up here, I'm gonna drop it and go straight to 3D. I'm gonna grab the cube, the 3D cube, selected layer, and then 3D extrusion. Okay. Then press create. There we go. Gonna go to the, your properties menu. Same things last time, turn off the cat shadows and the cast shadows. I'm gonna set my extrusion depth at zero and come here to cap, front and back. What is this, like, it's round something. It's not showing. The little, the little slope contour. It's like cap round or something. Anyway, set the angle to 90%, 90 degrees, and then adjust the strength. Now you can come up here, you've got um, pretty like five five ways that you can move your object. I'm just gonna use this one, the revolve one, so you can see what's being done to the front, what's being done to the back, you know. You can move it however you like. And I'm just gonna keep mine right where I had it. I'm gonna bring it forward just a little bit. Yeah, I'll bring it forward just a little bit. And we'll leave it like that. Mm, I'll set it to 40%. And I'm happy with that. And now we're gonna grab the 3D, select the 3D cube icon here, go up to your little hamburger menu, and then press export 3D layer. And from here, you want to select Wavefront OBJ and press OK. I'm going to save it as, what's today, October 27th, save. And from there, you're going to open, let me close this because I don't need it anymore. I'll just make my computer run slower if I keep it up. Okay. Now we're going to open stage.
nature. Go to open and wherever you saved it, go to that, open it up. So you'll see this little direction navigating thing. Just click on it. And there. You can see we have our... Uh, there, you can see we have our, our text. And I'm just going to adjust it so it's as forward facing as I want it. For me, I'm personally not into the shadows, I just don't need them. So I'm gonna just select the background here, go to ground, this is shadow opacity, I'm gonna turn that all the way to zero. I'm also gonna turn the background to white. There we go. And this is the ground plane. You can adjust with the X, Y, Z down here. Grab the object, which you can select artwork up here, object, and then transform. I'm going to click this chain so that it's linked. I'm just going to scale, scale it down a bit. There we go. this they have a bunch of 3d objects that are already in here where you can build scenes they've got a lot of product packaging sign leds a lot more than anything dimension had um yeah this is just a better version of dimension and then you still have the the regular staples that were already in dimension as well you've got cube sphere plane and then you have the ability to turn 2D text into 3D just by um, using this one. Um, eh. You can use it. <laughs> it's not it's not as good as if you have your own 3D object that you import into here, but it does the job. Yeah. Anyway, next we're gonna go grab this little circle here, which is our materials. And I want to use metal. I've used glass before. And I really like glass, but they have like water. Let me turn on, you'll turn on ray tracing. It's just, it's a render preview. Uh, yeah, and so you'll use metal. And this is what I really like to use is the best part in my opinion. From here, we're gonna go grab lights. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we'll grab lights. So it's just this sun icon. And I'm gonna use this Villanova street light down here. But well, we're going to change the picture, so you don't have to worry about that. So it gives you something really smooth. 
And so now that we've selected that, you can come over to your environmental light. This will just automatically show up. So grab it, and just click on it, and then you'll select this little flat file here, open it up. And you can select any picture that you want. I did this yesterday. Uh, I got a picture from Unsplash, which I'll link in the description. And I blurred the background just so it has a smoother, it adds roughness to it that you wouldn't be able to do in this software. So I increased the intensity for this image to 155%. And now I'm just going to play around with the rotation until it looks how I want it to. Mm. It's alright. You can keep the image that if you like it more, but you can also just find one that you like better. So there's trees here. Um, there's studio lighting. There's like 80s style lights. You can go to Unsplash Pixels or whatever and find an image that you like and do the same thing. Just click on image and import it that way. There you go. I'm going to turn off the tracing just for now. I'm going to stay in environment. I'm going to come to the top for the physical light. Now I'm going to turn on three point light. There we go. We'll go back to ray tracing. Yeah, and to me, it's a, these, um, that key light is a little sharp. Hmm, might be the back light actually. I'm just going to adjust the intensity and then I can, yeah, and then I'll show you which one's, one's really causing, you know, causing the light to be that intense. And I'll bring the height down for this one as well. I'm going to turn off the backlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to do. So what I decided to do is I turned off that backlight just because I know this is going to go on a, this is probably going to go on a white background. Or even if I use an image, I don't want it to have that white outline look. So I'm going to grab the fill light which is in the same uh, menu area. I'm just going to rotate it to about 75%. Which is just going to bring that light from one side to the other. Scroll down just a bit and turn that square light to circle. Mm. Um, let's see what that would look like closer to the edge here. Mm, might have taken it too far. Scale back and just leave it at 100. Yeah, I'll leave that at 100. Go to key light. And I'm going to do the same thing here with rotation. I'm going to put that at 100%. Mm. Yeah, it'll work. Go to artwork. Up here at the top, material, and this is where you'll control pretty much control everything. Like if I turn the metallic all the way off, it'll 
be just this white chalky blob. So I'll probably take the roughness up just a little bit to see how I like it. I'm gonna let that sit at point two. And here's an option to change the color. You can do coat opacity. I'll bring it up to 0.5 and I'll just choose the color red. And so you can do something like this. And it looks really pretty, but personally I wait until I get it back into Photoshop just because when you render this out, that's what you're stuck with. If you wait until Photoshop, you can change it into however many colors you want it instead of you know coming back and constantly rendering and re-rendering and re-rendering. But I do kind of like I do kind of like the color that it's giving off here. So I'm gonna do it anyway. Yeah and so this is at the bottom coat. If you're choosing if you're using glass then you'll want it you can change the interior color. But anything that isn't transparent, there's no point in using interior. I'll s I'm gonna say that I'm done in here for this one. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And so you can keep ray tracing on. And we're gonna go to render. Uh, 72 uh, pixels per inch is perfectly fine. You can come up here if this will end up being too small for you. We're working in an 11 by 17 inch for the this post this particular poster, so this is a little small. You can you can save yourself some time on rendering and just scale up later. You'll only notice the difference if you really zoom in and you can see that the edges are really pixelated and not as sharp as you might want them. But I don't really see any problem leaving the size as it is. I'm going to 2600 and I'm going to have this at 30. Hmm. I'm going to 3800. interactive ray tracing just so you can see uh, your render as it's happening none of this needs to be uh, messed with again like if you take any of it down it'll reduce your render time but you'll get something lower quality so I'll just go ahead and click render and now we wait All right, now that we're done our render, we're gonna go back into Photoshop. All right, now we're gonna open it up back to that 11 by 17 document, or honestly, or whatever you're using. This could be for album cover, so 3,000 by 3,000, 5,000 by 5,000, whatever. We can create new, go to custom open, go to open. open up the document and yeah you'll probably you'll have to scale and it's fun because it's fun there we go there we go so I'll try I'll try that background out the one that I had made the other day with the image from unsplash so I'm going to go to place, place embedded, and send it to back. Yeah. Yeah. So you get something that looks similar to that. So if I were to do this, command duplicate, but that's not, layout is not what we're doing. 
so you can take this so I'm going to show you pretty much how you can create different styles or not different styles but kind of yeah different styles different colorways uh, from one render so I'll go to this your adjustments open it up you're gonna go to did I just do hue and set? Don't do hue and set. Do gradient. Your gradient map. Create clipping mask onto our 3D layer, which I'll just move it. 3D render. And you can choose. Or you can go through and choose bunch of different ones that you want. Alright, so I'll choose this one, go up to your normal here for your, your layer styles, and you can just come down here and choose, you know, which one that you want. You can choose hue, come in here, come back up to your, your gradient map, just choose a bunch of different gradients that would suit it the best. Choose a different gradient, come to hue, you know, color burn, maybe best for you, multiply. There we go, but I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna go back here. I kind of look pretty. A little linear burn. I'll hit Command J, drag the copy on top of uh, on top of the gradient map. Double click on the layer to open up your layer styles, and then from there, nah, let's add inner glow. You can turn it off, you don't, oops, you don't even need it on. And from, I just turned the fill off, so it'll keep all the, the inner glow and the satin that you just applied to it, but you can turn it off. And then you can adjust that to, hold on, you gotta choose one that fits. change your layer style to whatever you want it to be. So for this one, I'll choose color. And I'll apply, I'll apply a levels adjustment layer, create clipping mask as well. You can make it darker. You can bring down those, uh, those highlights. Bring up the low lights. I mean, you can really, there we go. Bring down those highlights. With levels, you can use le levels or curves. I just choose to use levels because it's just straightforward. You don't need to do a lot with it. And I'll use hue and saturation. I won't use hue and saturation. Trash it. something like that. 
any color or if you don't want any color anymore you can just press command shift U and that'll take you down to it'll desaturate the image um, coming back to something grayscale and then you can use levels here to adjust the whites and the blacks and the midtones and all that you can push it further and have something super dark, something black like that. Yeah, and you still get all of that detail from the previous render, or you get all the detail from it being rendered. There we go. Let's choose something warmer. And that's it. Keep, you can keep playing around with it until you figure out you know how you want it to look but that's all there is to this one <laughs> 